I'm Brian Gallagher from Ancestry and I'm here with Dr. Michael Lacopo. Uh, you've had a very interesting career from veterinarian to yes. professional genealogist. Yes. Can you tell us how that happened or how, why you became a professional genealogist? Well, um, I was a veterinarian, small animal veterinarian for 23 years, and but I've been a genealogist since I was a nerdy teenager, so that started way back when. So I guess the short answer is I was a, it, be, it was a hobby turned obsession turned profession. Okay. And so I started doing more research and more lecturing and more client work and less veterinary medicine, so it phased out. But they're really very similar because you know, veterinarians and um, genealogists are, we put together puzzles, okay. we get little pieces of information. If a sick animal, you get blood tests, a physical exam, a medical history. Same thing as genealogy, you get little pieces and it's a, it's a deductive reasoning and analytical thinking. So they kind of are more similar than you think. Okay, only yeah. you wouldn't maybe bring your cat to a genealogist. No, and, all, no. and when you're a genealogist, all your patients are dead already, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and you've developed quite the following with the Who's Your Daddy blog? Who's Your Daddy, yes. Um, and you're sharing, I guess, the exhaustive search for your maternal grand. Parent? So grandfather, yes. Grandfather. So um, it's ironic that a genealogist who started doing research uh, as a teenager, that it was only until last February that I found out that my mother's father was not the man she thought he was okay. through DNA. Um, and so I, I went on a search to find him. Um, and so, you know, God bless my grandmother. She's not living now. But I was looking for my grandmother's one night stand from 1946. Wow. And I found him. And the uh, blog was pretty much written in real time, so it was finding him and the process yes. it took to find him. Um, and uh, yes, it's it's gotten quite a following. I believe in storytelling and in, in talking about the stories that um, yeah. that people bring into genealogy, not just the names, dates, and places. So every time I introduce a new person to the blog, whether it be someone that I tested to look for my grandfather or someone, the people who raised my mother, the people she thought were her parents, it led to more storytelling. So it became, it's fun, it's time consuming, but yes, it's it's been, it's gotten quite a lot of attention. And what was the end result of all your research into that? Well, I, my, so if my grandmother were living, her, she would have been 97 years old yesterday. Um, so I did not anticipate finding a living human being, but I found a living 88 year old grandfather. Wow. Yeah. How did you feel when you found him? Overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, it's just, it's just something you would never imagine. I just thought I'd have an identity and a name and a line to search to, course, to fill yeah. in my quarter of my ancestry that was screwed up. Um, so, yeah, it was just it was just a jaw-dropping wow I, 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 I yeah. can imagine, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> Read the blog. Start from the beginning, though. So I uh, might just start halfway. There you go, okay. okay. Uh, what's the most exciting record collection you've researched? Well, besides the search for my grandfather, I mean, what I tend to be known for is German research, okay. especially as the German immigration to colonial Pennsylvania. So in an exhaustive search for a family, I was researching the criminal court records of Pennsylvania for one county in Pennsylvania, so I had to read, read every criminal case from 1785 to 1850. That's a lot. It's a lot, but it was really interesting reading, like things that would make your hair curl. It's like, you know, like these that. affidavits for all sorts of crazy crimes and women murdering their bastard children and throwing them in wells and wow. just horrific things. And, you know, we think we live in a very violent society now, but, you know, there's a lot of, there's not a lot new under the sun. When it must it be difficult to, to read through so much darkness, like dark content like that. The, yeah, it was, there was some like jaw dropping, like, oh my God, this is horrible things. There were some comical things. There was just some, you know, very um, interesting things that people would be arrested for. Um, so it was a lot of reading, but it was very, it was a fascinating research. I went to Pennsylvania. Um, usually for a week every month, for several months to read these, and I look forward to it. But I'm crazy that way. <laughs> I think we are. Yeah. Crazy yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite offline place to, uh, to research? Well, you know, I guess one leads to the other because I've spent so much time at the Pennsylvania State so Archives. That would be it. The archivists at the Pennsylvania State Archives are incredible. They're like the friendliest, most helpful people. And all archives, I tell people in a lot of my lectures, if they should, if genealogists should do one thing, it should hug, be hug an archivist every day. Because <laughs> archivists, they know their collections, they have wonderful things, um, and they really want people to use them. And so most of the archives I've been to have been with people who are very helpful. I just happen to have a lot of experience with the Pennsylvania State Archives, and they've just been a phenomenally wonderful resource and helpful people. That's good. So, Michael, thank you very much. Thank you very much.